Hey, CG Tinker here. In this video, I want to show you how to use camera motion tracking with Blender Track. In this situation, I was in the forest on a foggy day, and you see me walking around physically in the environment. I just walk around, hold the camera steady, and place some reference objects. I always try to have the reference objects in frame to avoid driftings, because this actually will help to let them stick there. Now you see me starting a recording and I just start walking around a little bit and as soon as I'm happy with it, I press the play button to do another tracking and keeping all the reference objects around. And this will allow me to use the same location points in Blender by importing the data later on. So let's jump right into Blender and check out the results. If you don't have Blender Track installed, you will find a link to Gumroad in the description below. To install it, you gotta go to Edit, Preferences, hit the Install button, navigate to your downloads, select Blender Track, double tap it, and usually that's enough. Searching for Blender Track in the search panel, and if it's already registered, you will find it in the end panel or you gotta activate it by pressing the button. In the side panel, you will find Blender Track, and here you can import data by selecting the file path. Data from the app can be exported as SIPs. If you export multiple SIPs, those will export in one SIP folder. So you will find SIP files in a SIP folder, like so. If you want to import data, you got to extract zips. If you just export one zip, you don't have to do this process. And here you see a lot of camera motion tracking I've done. Now I want to import camera motion tracking. So I just can drag and drop the folder in. So I already see the files. And now I can just select the camera motion tracking, hit the accept button, import the data. And there we go we have our camera motion tracking in Blender. If I also want to import the other camera motion tracking I've shown you before, just select it. And now we have the camera motion trackings in Blender. This process works fairly fast. We can import a character. I've modeled an alien <laughs> a long while ago. So I will drop in the alien here. Here's my alien. And to move the character around easily, I usually add an empty. Then I drag and drop by pressing shift the character under the empty. So I can easily move the empty around and don't have issues at all. So I select this empty, press shift S and choose cursor to select it. Now I select the empty which holds the character, press shift S, choose selection to cursor. Now let's look through a camera and enable the rendering. All right, now we are in Eevee and we have no light at all. Because of that, the character appears in black. I add a light by pressing Shift A. Let's check a short render by pressing F12. You will see only my little alien there. I choose in the render settings a transparent film. So we'll get a transparent background while rendering. Now you see the character is on a transparent background and I could do some compositing in another software or directly in Blender. So let's switch to the compositing tab. In the compositing tab, you have to activate the nodes by pressing use nodes. And here you will see the render layers. If you add a viewer node, you got to render a frame to see something. Now. I'm adding um, a movie clip node. If you browse the movie clips that are um, already linked in Blender, you will find um, the movie clips. You can also navigate to the zip files and open them there. Now um, I'm selecting a movie file and now I want to combine those. And the easiest way is to use alpha over. So I select alpha over, use the images, and there it is. Now, this looks like it doesn't fit. 
because the video footage size is not actually your screen size. Those recordings don't match. That's why we got to distort either the movie clip or the render from Blender to match those two clips together. And I'm distorting usually the movie size, so I use a scale node, distort scale, and use the render size parameter and scratch it. And if we render now, by hitting F12, we see we forgot something. We got to plug the alpha over into the compositing tab. All right, now we have the alien inside, but it doesn't look too great yet. Now let's add a shadow catcher to the character to make the whole scenery a lot more realistic. At first, I'm adding a plane. So let's go to the shading tab. Here we create a new material and we want to have a diffuse EDSF. And just for reference, an emission shader. If we plug in the emission shader to the material output, you will see, let's say, a red color at first. And now let's use a mix shader. Let's, let's take a, a blue emission shader. This is just for reference. And now we want to have the shadows as factor in between the blue and the red color. So we convert the diffuse BSDF to RGB. Now the shader information is color information and this color information we want to be black and white information. If we plug those into the factor, we see a mixture of both in here. Next we want to enhance the effect to have the red really around because we want to have the red as transparent channel later. I use a map range node for that because like so, I can enhance those effects greatly. And the values will be in between 0 and 1 because they are clamped. And this works similar to a color ramp, and you can definitely try around which you prefer. Now I change out those two shaders. On the top, I want a diffuse shader because this is actually shadow information. And on the bottom, I want a transparent shader, a transparent BSDF. And now you will see that the transparent BDSF is black. Now let's just check the material properties because you will see in the blend mode, there is the material opaque and opaque cannot be transparent. So we got to change this value to alpha blend. And now it will be transparent. And the shadow mode you can keep on opaque but also you can change it to alpha clip or none because we don't actually want to throw shadows with the plane. Now if we switch to a camera our character will actually throw some shadows which is great already. So if we render this we have some decent little shadow which is a minor effect but it really helps. And if I go to the compositing, I just added some color correction to the character to blend the character in a little bit better, removed some contrast, removed some saturation, and used the alpha channel as a mask to just add those effects to the character. Now I'm just starting a render and have the compositing already enabled in the render. I just rendered this camera. I can just click Control and Numpad 0 on the other camera. Now I look through the other camera and if I go to the compositing now, I also have to enable the other movie clip for rendering. And if I press on the render button now, you will see my character on the other movie clip and that's about it. I hope you got an idea how to use Blender Track for camera motion tracking and have fun. See you around.